Sorry, I, t I took my turn twice. Ooh, You're I am going to get that one. Lucky duck. I'm going to get it. This thing's going to close. Hi, Facebook. Are we live yet? Ooh. Okay. All right. <laughs> we got a crazy game of Jenga going on. <laughs> oh, wait. I already started. Do you push I pushed it back. Because <laughs> you were cheating. <laughs> I was Allison cheating. likes to cheat. I forgot same kind of things. that it wasn't my turn. <laughs> so. And so. Yeah. Explain why we're playing Jenga, Mike. Well, so this last week, um, we've been talking about life balance and why people are getting on. Uh, and I, while I'm sharing this, we are thought we'd play a, a game of Jenga, right? To see how we strategically play stuff and move stuff around. And uh -huh. so I am sharing it right post. now. Post. Posted. Okay. Hashtag balance. It's your turn. Not word shave power. Uh, <laughs> so how many of you, so Sunday uh, at church, I talked about balance. And we use the idea of Jenga, that we constantly are moving pieces around. Should I take that one? No, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to help you. Yeah, you're going to help me. <laughs> that defeats the and so, competition. And so we talked about life balance, and Jenga is like a Ooh. balancing act. And really, in the life of Jenga, we don't, uh, in the game at least, mm -hmm. and I came to the conclusion that games don't teach us healthy behaviors as children. <laughs> but um, this... Do anything uh, to win, right? <laughs> right, that's, that's, what, that's what we do. Uh, that we, we often, and, and think of the Jenga pieces of, as all the stuff and all the crap we have to do, and we just move them around, right? And we don't ever really find true balance. And so I invite everybody to think of life as a scale, right? that um, in order to balance, sometimes you have to add two. So we have all the stuff that we, we do and it gets in balance and here's all the stuff, right? Here's all the bad stuff. I shouldn't say bad stuff. Here's the busybody stuff. Here's the stuff that consumes our life. And we think that in order to, to offset that, then we have to take more vacations, you know, all that. And so there, then we try to do it with, with adding more stuff over here. And what I challenged everybody with was what if we pulled stuff out <laughs> of this side so that it balances itself out instead of trying to add more and more and more stuff in. And so, because I, I think this reflects our life, right? We push and we move and we restack and we situate it here. And it's just as chaotic as it was before. And we don't really, I mean, there's no life change in that. It's just juggling. Just moving it around. Yeah, just moving stuff around. And so, um, I send out reflection questions. For those of you that don't go to our church, because I know there's a lot of people watching, we send out reflection questions. Amy, are you going to post those? I can't remember. I will try to. Amy's going to post some of those questions, and I want to talk about how do we balance life. So in your life, how do you balance? Are you the kind of person that adds more to the good? Oh, I mean, yeah. I was this person. Mm -hmm. Like, we just, need, we just need another vacation. We just need to get away to the lake for a weekend. Mm -hmm. And then what happens? You actually, it makes it worse because yeah, now you've you missed overloaded. work. Yeah, well, and, and you, you have to make up for the work before you leave and when you get back. And so it actually makes you more stressed. And, and because those of us who struggle with letting go of work and letting a thing be, mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't happen. And so we add what we think is good stuff, but it's just more stuff. So do you guys do this? Do you do it, Allison? Oh, absolutely. Um, but this reminded me of something. While, while people are answering that question, um, you know, all these shows are rebooting now. Like, you know how everybody's doing reunion shows and stuff. Is Friends ever going to do thought, a reunion? Are they sh they're the one who should. I know. Okay, but I keep seeing all these, and I, I thought about the pruning in it, and I heard that Fresh Prince of Bel-Air was going to do a reunion, and I'm like, you know we removed some, and some just shouldn't come back. <laughs> I don't know. It was like, I don't know. It was an okay show. I just love Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Remember, I love the song, and I think Will Smith is funny, but the show itself. In West Philadelphia, <laughs> born and raised on the playground is where I spent most, most of my, my days. days. Oh, chilling this is out. bad. <laughs> well, we, were gonna, we said we were going to sing this week, <laughs> this right? So. This is for Chuck. This is for Chuck. There you go, Chuck. Uh, <laughs> well, remember Chloe? Uh, Chloe used to work here. Yeah. Her brother did a movie trailer based on the series of Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Oh, right. And it got to Will Smith. And he saw it and liked it. And so they were in talks about making a movie. And so that was our okay. very own Chloe Cooper. Sorry, Will Smith. No, no offense. <laughs> but sometimes we try to bring things back that we just shouldn't. We shouldn't should. bring back. We just should leave it where it was in the past. Leave it alone. So then I'm thinking, okay, out there, have you thought about 
the activities that you did as a family prior to COVID, and then some of them got canceled. What did you decide it was better to leave out, if anything? Yeah, what are you, what are you cutting? My analogy from the Bible on uh, Sunday was Jesus talks, and after you and I had a conversation about tomatoes. So Allison, she's like, we have this garden. We have all these tomatoes, and it was producing a lot of tomatoes, but it seemed overgrown, and she's like, I read somewhere that you should trim it back. What do we call it? We call it pruning, right? I couldn't think of the word. Right. We pruning it back, and, and you cut it back, and then the tomatoes started to get better, right? And they were bigger and fuller, and they were better tomatoes. But we were worried that... Like, it looked so bare and felt so skinny and there were no leaves in it. And we were worried. And so I think that's how it is. Like, we're worried if we cut back these activities that somehow our kids are going to miss out or we are going to miss out. FOMO! Yes, fear of missing out. Do you guys do this? Out. Yes. Like, I get anxiety if I'm not doing something. Yeah. I mean, do you... Do I, I you have feel to... like I should be there and not miss out on whatever this or is? I'm, or I'm, I just... I'm, I'm supposed to be doing something, right? I can't... Mm -hmm. I mean... Idle hands do the devil's work, Allison. <laughs> and so, that's a ha hashtag half-truth. Um, but, oh, do y'all do that? I do that all the time. Mm -hmm. I can't sit still. You don't want My to family hates it. They get together. You don't want your kid to miss that sporting event or whatever. And it's like this fear that you're going to do something you regret or not do something that you'll regret. So let's talk about that for a minute, though. What are we teaching our kids when we tell them that they're supposed to fill all their time with stuff. Uh, you know, I believe the most important thing we could be teaching our kids, our friends, you know, sharing with each other is that we're a part of something greater than us. But when we teach our, our families and our friends and those around us that filling our time with just sports or dance, whatever it is, activities of, of some kind, man, and I do it, right? We've cut back. We've made some decisions to cut some things out and not bring them back. Like what? Um, it's sensitive. Oh, never mind. Right now. Don't tell me. Okay. Uh, no, 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 meaning okay. uh, the situation. Anyway, I will talk about it, just not today. Okay. Uh, so, Stay tuned. Yeah, but there, we, we have cut some things out. Uh, and some have been forcefully cut out. So I coach basketball through BSAA, and um, they're not doing basketball this fall. That's of course, we went undefeated. Problem. My baby girl Aww. was the MVP of the league last year. And so, uh, so that, you know, I was like, oh, oh. And I, it pains me, but I'm like, you know what? Maybe we can use this time. Maybe Kira and I can just go play basketball down the street. You know, the neighbor's got a goal or whatever. Sure. So, so what are you all cutting out? I want to hear from you. Or maybe they've been telling us, Amy. What are we? What are, Amy? What are you cutting out? Amy's here today. She's back, by the way. Thank you to Chuck for helping out last week. Yeah, thanks, Chuck. Yes, thank you, Chuck. I have just been trying to uh, use my time more more wisely. I would say um, not everything's been added back in yet, so I haven't necessarily had to make right. cuts yet. Uh, Ashley commented that everything has been cut. For us, mm. Mm. it looks like they they do identify with the fear of missing out thing. Yes, yeah. Ashley said she has she does not like to miss out. Well, that's real, and plus, when you're like seeing everybody's Facebook life, you know how we have the real life and the Facebook life. <laughs> like you see everybody's pictures and things they're doing, and like we can get caught up easily in oh my gosh, I'm not doing enough, or I'm not doing the right things, or look how much fun they're having, or whatever. And it's like this comparison trap of... Keeping up with the Joneses. Yeah, not doing all the same things yeah. that my friends and their kids are doing, or whatever. When my kids were younger, um, my wife and I have a few friends that we hung out with. And we had this other friend that was a relative of a friend, and she was like, architect by day, you know, and she was like super mom by night. She was always posting all these pictures, all, all these crafts she knew with her friends and all this stuff. And they're always like, how in the heck, who has to, like, as if she was some kind of super mom and better, you know, they felt inferior because of that. Did she have a nanny? And we probably. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's probably what it really was. It's There's like a nanny behind the, the house, scenes. right? <laughs> Gosh, how many of you feel like that? And all you do is take care of your kids and clean up their messes. I try to teach them to clean up their own mess, but then my own crap gets involved and I'm like, no, I want it to be cleaned this way. You lower the dishwasher wrong. Control I mean, some people might do much. that. No, not at all, Allison. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't. I can let go of I'm things. actually like that, too, about the dishwasher. <laughs> like, it. it should be a certain way because it's like, wash is better. It doesn't cl That, because it doesn't get clean. You can't put a cup in upside down. I don't know. Anybody have that problem? Who out there has a problem with the way the dishwasher's loaded? <laughs> it's, yeah. Oh. Uh, we have issues. Um, <laughs> but you got them, too. Um, just give them all to me. I'll give mine to you. Somebody should write a song about that. And so, 
<laughs> See, yeah. we, even if we don't bust out in song, we, we talk, we think in song. Think I think in song. song lyrics. Yep. Because, well, they're beautiful. Um, so, adding things in, taking things out. What are you doing? What are the people doing, Amy? Okay. Amy's doing this back there. She's going... I haven't like, heard anything else. I'm waiting. Okay. I'm waiting to hear. Well, this is a time for all of you who are watching to be interactive, to tell us your stories, to interact, because if you wanted to hear uh, a teachable moment, right? We talk about that on Sunday. But I, we want this to be interactive so that we can talk about the things that you would have So what are you struggling with? If you're watching today, what are you struggling with? What are the things that you can't, maybe you can't let go of? Um, or maybe you just feel like you have to add it back in. Maybe the issue is people miss it. Like, in, not, in all honesty, we want it. to add it back in because <laughs> we miss it. Yes. You know? Yeah. And so it's hard to answer the question of what should I cut out when you're, like, longing for things to do still. Because right. some of it's come back. But like you said, basketball's not back. Like, they're... My, we can't go son, to any sporting events, right. even through the school district. My son did robotics last year. He's not doing it this year. And it's like every day after school, I would drive him to robotics and drive him back. And there was just this the part of our lives where that time every day we were tied up. And now we're not. I mean, part of that's because he got his driver's license. So that, <laughs> I wouldn't be tied up anymore. You're not but, a human taxi anymore. I know. What's that like? It's pretty cool. That's awesome. I look forward it to is. it. Uh, I say that, but then when my oldest started driving, I missed our moments of driving every morning to school. So uh, that's just part of, you know. That the, was your talk time. That was our talk time. That was our table talk. Yeah. Our car talk. Your car talk. What's the little, what's the thing in the middle? You put the your console. Arm the console. Console talk. <laughs> the thing just, where everything gets lost down in yeah. the tracks. And everything gets stuck in the console, right? Never you, just, find you it open again. it up and it's just, you open it up, it's just like napkins and old <laughs> forks. I do because I extra hoard books. them. I do. Do you hoard things? We're gonna talk about that this week, by the way. Hoarding. Yeah, next week. This, uh, this coming week. Yeah. I don't hoard, but I do feel like if I get an extra set of those plastic utensils, that someday they are gonna come in handy because someone's gonna forget to get me one. Yeah. And it just happened the other day, and I was like <laughs> justified. Look. I am justified. <laughs> My glove compartment is full of those. Ah, Amy's the same as me. Yeah, straws, napkins, and like plastic utensils, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, just keep them all. Okay, so. What about, oh, Taco Bell sauce? <gasps> no. I don't keep condiments in there. Like that. Mayonnaise. That mayonnaise. Is over. Ew. <laughs> so, Chuck, when you were asking about what people are cutting out, Chuck said he's cutting out pizza. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Producing talk shows. <laughs> Chuck! What? What? You can't do that. You have to come back. <laughs> that when her son played ball, she didn't like it when they had to cancel a game because she thought he would be missing out on memories. Mm. But then later on, she figured out that maybe he missed out on the memories with his team, but he was making memories with her because it was more time exactly. they could together. Just different memories. Yes. Jen said she struggles with finding a balance at home between working at home and then being at home and, and, and beating your children together. Mm -hmm. Oh, being, not beating. Okay, yeah. Because mm -hmm. you don't get to go to work and have that separation <laughs> in your life and... Is yes. that what she means? Yes. Don't act like some of you haven't thought about beating your kids. Okay. Yeah, it's just all about home right now. Yes. We're excited for them to for ours to go back to school next week. I, my son's excited. He really is ready. Yeah. He he wants to go back. We go pick up his device tomorrow. Oh, yeah, because he's a sophomore. See, mine are freshmen. No, he's a junior. Junior, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> real talk. This is real, folks. There's no scripts. <laughs> No, we just we just literally have a small outline here of what we're going to talk about, and then just go from there. So, I don't know. Um, what else? I think one of the things that I was thinking about this week is just how you know you talked about on Sunday. We talked about what to cut back and what not to cut back. And sometimes you said bad and good just to make a point, but you didn't really mean bad and good. Some of it is all good. It's just too much, right? It's well, that's, a, that's the balance. Like, yeah, right, you add the good, good but stuff, it just adds stuff. But it's, but it's still just harmful too much. for your. It's harmful still. Yeah. And yeah. so, what's hard about right now, though, is that the things that we're being forced to cut is that sense of being together. And so, we have this lack of just being in a place with a big group of people. It, for me, it gives me like a sense of humanity. Like, there's more than just me. We're all in this together. There's a big right. group of people here. So right now it's like you feel, I feel isolated. Yep. Those people are still there. It's right. just, you know, different feel. Well, it's hard. Yeah. Because yeah. physical isolation always leads to mental isolation. It does 100% of the time. 
um, if you don't combat it, if you don't do things to, and so, I mean, one of the points of this, right, is that we're hoping people can, because I know a lot of you aren't comfortable coming back to church, and we're not here to force anything. Um, I, we are going to encourage safety practices, but, and I do want you to come back or be a part of a small group, but I also realize there'll be some of you that won't come back until next year sometime. And so I, I, don't, I don't think in our humanity, we cannot lose community. Mm -hmm. If we lose a community, we lose ourselves. Like we lose who we are and why we exist if we lose that. So I'm not saying it's hopeless. I'm just saying we have to be very intentional and try really hard then to engage in communal activities that might look different, right? Mm -hmm. Because we're not going to have the same amount of people at church. We're not going to be able to say, you know, we can't hug everybody every Sunday. You know, the stuff, but we can still have dialogue. We can still have intelligent conversation. Um, and we can still, you know, communion. The idea of what communion is, is sitting there. So the idea of having a meal. Is the important part of communion having the meal? Or is it the conversation that ha happens around the dinner table? Right. right? It's the conversation that happens. Like, well, you could just have a really long dinner table. Right? Sm shorter fences, longer tables. <laughs> that way you stay apart. Yeah. But you still have your dinner table and your dinner and your conversation. Yeah. And if we're masked off and we can be around tables, right. you know. And, and even if, so we did a Zoom call with the band. And I think they still do a Zoom. I'm not sure if they still do or not. If they're meeting in person. We did it for months. And it, I have fun with it. We made a recipe every week. We because did. everyone, okay, when you stay home, you cook more. You can't go out. So we were all sick of the same recipes. The same darn thing we make all the time. <laughs> and so Erin Curry was doing this Michael Simon thing. She was following Michael Simon for quarantine. And he was putting out a, re a new recipe every day. So she would pick one and send it out to the group. And then we would all make it or some iteration of it. It wasn't right. always the same based on what you had or liked or whatever. And then we Well, and eat some it. people, yeah. <clears throat> Abby, uh, just opened a can of corn and ate it. They would just eat a can of corn. <laughs> <laughs> Abby's working right now. She's actually here in the building and she can't even defend she herself. Can't defend so I hope she watches this later, Abby Ruggles. And you watch this and we're calling you out. So. But the point was we ate it together. We did. We and had we fun. Talked, yeah. And we had conversation and we just talked about what was going on in the world. So we may had to make a big effort to make it happen. Though. And some weeks, I'll be honest with you, some weeks I'm like, oh. I gotta go make chicken marsala tonight. I gotta go to the store and get the stuff. And I gotta prep and I gotta cut it up. But you know what? Every week when we sat down and we ate and then we're just talking about our lives, I'm like, oh, it's not the same. It's not quite the same, but it felt so good. Like it just felt like we still had some sense of community. And so I, I just wanna remind everybody as we're adding things back in, make sure, make sure that we are adding that community, which I believe is one of those foundational pieces. I talked about yes, this on Sunday. Yes, that's one of these down here. That's you one of those. Here, people. here, we'll do it together. I'll push it out and you, you pull and put it on yeah, top. Yeah, gotta keep playing. <laughs> that, those foundational pieces of community, right? Uh, that we don't lose those. That we intentionally stay connected to one another. Whatever that means. And what that looks like for you is gonna be different than what it looks like for me. What it looks like for you at home is gonna be different than what it looks like for us. Now, this is the beauty of faith, right? Like, our relationship with God is the same way. What God and who God is to me is different than who he is to you. And that's, like, that's a good thing. And so the ways we stay connected with God and with each other are going to look different. And one, make peace with that. Like, that's okay. Like, not everybody has to come to church. Now, you know me. Before this, you had to come to church or, like, you were going to hell. And so... Now we've all learned that's not actually going to happen. I'm kidding. We're if you don't go to our church, that's a joke. I 100% think... <laughs> I tell people it's not about Sunday mornings all the time because it's not. It's not. Uh, but but th this idea that the community is the important part. So what I did tell you was that small groups are important, right? Uh, serving is important. And we gave you... We tried to give uh, everybody uh, in this community a, a way to serve and a way to connect... Because um, that's our, our words are connect, serve, grow, right? And, and then to share those with other people. And what it feels like, I think, for some of us is we aren't able to connect. We, a lot of us can't even serve in the same capacity. Now, Ashley Horton was talking earlier. That girl is up here probably more than anybody else. She has continued to serve. But I know it's even different. Ashley, you tell me if I'm wrong, but now you serve by yourself. She comes up and she packs meals and she takes care oh, of the food pantry. It's different by yourself. It is different. But props to... And not probably anybody, but Ashley, I just want to say a personal thank you to you that you have been so dedicated during all of this to help us out, to feed those in our community, to make sure they have food, to make sure our kids have food, and to all the rest of you who have done that. But I know I see Ashley up here. 
She comes in after the daycare closes so that you know she doesn't have to be around a lot of people uh, and that she's safe and protected and then she does she arranges our food pantry and takes care of it and all this stuff. So I, I do want to challenge people though because what is it in this time if you're um, not comfortable we can't do big groups you know because we used to do all these big meal pack you know we'd pack mm -hmm. 10,000 20,000 we've done 40,000 meals in one day before. And it takes a mass amount of people, right? Hundreds of people to come together and do that. Uh, we'd have build dates. You know, if you've ever heard of um, Sleep in Heavenly Peace, where they build beds, right? They aren't able to do theirs either. So what does serving look like going forward? And I always invited people to think of serving, not just from a faith standpoint. Let me back up. Not just from a church community standpoint, but from a faith standpoint. So serving is serving and loving your neighbor. And maybe that means you could take a meal to a neighbor just as the kind gesture, right? And leave it on their porch. Maybe that means, you know, I used to always tell people, buy the coffee for the person behind you. Well, maybe you're not going to get coffee anymore. You know, just, maybe you're not. Yeah, but you're saying be a good human, not in the right. context of a religious. Correct. You know. But also in the context of, I'm just kidding. Both. <laughs> but, but you can care about others. Yeah. I mean, where's our mask? Amy, do you have one of our masks? We, we handed a mask out to our kids this week. Uh, they simply said, be kind. I mean, if there's nothing else we can do, uh, we can sprinkle. What are the, what are the, we had a Facebook meme. You sprinkle that stuff everywhere. Be kind. That's easy. It's free. You know. You know. And that's serving has many different faces. Oh, we're gonna get Amy on camera. Yay, Amy! Oh, the be kind mask. Yeah. So it's the kid size. Would it fit an adult though? Uh, we're gonna get some adult ones. We're gonna do a fundraiser. Uh, I think. Oh, it'd be tight. Yeah. <laughs> I won't go. I won't go any further with that. Um, Allison's ears are really far apart. I don't know. She, I don't they're, know. If that's they're true almost or not. on the back of my head. <laughs> not really. She's a mom. She has ears all the way around her head. That's they hear true. and see everything. Ears right? and eyes yeah, are everywhere. That's true. So, how is it that you're able to continue to serve? And if you come to church here, I try to give ideas or tools every week of ways we can serve each other. But it all breaks down to the simple words of this. Right? I mean. At the end of the day, it's simply to be kind. And so, you know, the last few weeks we talked about, you know, how do we use our words? How do we act? You know, how do we take action and do this? And, and um, we're just not good at it. <laughs> we're not good. Well, it's real easy right now to let your frustrations in general get the better of you. And like, I, don't, I get frustrated super easy, I feel like now, just because things are so not normal. And so... There's just this heightened level of tension or whatever I feel in my life. Yeah. And so it's easier for me to become unkind. Well, because our politics and I mean, a lot of politics right now. That's a big thing, right um, now, for sure. A lot of politics coming into play and we're using our words to hurt one another. And uh, instead of just agreeing to disagree, mm -hmm. um, we demonize the other person. Because if you're the devil, if you're the bad person, then I get to be the good person, right? So I can't just prove a point or make a point. I also have to destroy you. I mean, that's the mindset. I disagree with that. That's not a good thing well, to do. Well, that but... mindset is easier when you are not regularly in community yep. with others. The so I believe separation makes that easier. I believe that's heightened right now because yeah. we aren't around each other physically. And when we're not around each other, I mean, it's real easy to sit on our phones and go, ha, 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 you're a blank, 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 blankety, blank, 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 you know, and, and type that out. Whereas if we were sitting across the table from each other, or even if we can see each other, there's something about Zoom, right? Mm -hmm. Even at that, that actual connection of seeing the other person, because we know that a lot of communication is nonverbal, right? Mm -hmm. It's in our body language. Yeah. I think when we can actually have actual conversations and not demonize people. And so right now we have groups of people that if you're on this side, you're right, and this side is wrong, and, and, and the inverse is also true. And, and what I always try, try to direct people, I'm going to do a sermon about this before the election, but I think... Um, when we say we, we need to put our trust in God and we need to love each other and love God, um, that means that we don't put all of our faith in politics and our government, right? Because I adamantly, everybody thinks I lean a certain way. And there are some ideals I might agree with on a certain side, but I don't lean a certain way. I think in the political world uh, that most politics people are out for themselves and that we look at our politics as some kind of salvation. Right? I think it's going to solve a problem. Right? I mean, every election that I've been a part of, I get and I will get emails. If this person gets like the world's ending, they're the Antichrist, which means their other person is what? The wow. Savior. And the, oh, and the universe is, and go, go YouTube videos about this stuff. It's just not true. Government is not the Savior, and they're not the Anti-Savior, right? Mm -hmm. We have a God. 
You got all excited and almost knocked over our I did, didn't I? I guess I'm talking about stuff. Um, and I think we need to remember that in a political season. True. That this thing uh, that we give a lot of value to. And don't hear me wrong. Don't stop um, participating and doing something that you believe in. But we have to be kind. And I promise you the world's not going to fall apart regardless of who's elected. I said that every election. Right. I'm going to keep... I'm going to say it a lot between now and November 3rd. Well, it's up to you people to make sure that we are treating yeah. each other in a way that it doesn't fall apart. Like, it's not... It, we can still be kind humans no matter who gets elected. Yeah. So, balance in our politics. Ooh! Mm, balance! Ooh. We're back to balance. <laughs> we brought it back around. Yeah. Well, our system... So, you know, as Christians, there's this idea called the Trinity, right? The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, right? That God... God is manifest in different ways. That there's this, there's the idea of, of who and what God is. It's manifest and made human in Jesus, and then we feel it and experience it through the Holy Spirit, right? Just the ways we different to describe God. Well, that creates balance in our faith walk, right? That we have an ideal, we have something to live up to. We have a human being in Jesus, right? God made flesh that showed us how to live it, and that that, that morphs and changes over time. And meaning how we love each other morphs and changes over time, and how it connects us changes over time. And that's the Holy Spirit. So there's this Trinitarian idea, right? That it's not black and white. It's not either or. The beautiful part about our government is it was set up very similarly, right? There's equal parts of our government. And it has three different uh, parts to it. So that there is constantly push and pull and swinging. And that um, these things aren't bad in and of themselves. That sometimes um, the push and pull... And I, don't hear me. I'm not making any political statements of that. I'm saying the natural progression of push and pull. There are some extremes right now, and I'm fully aware of that, so I'm not supporting any side or candidate or anything. But the nature of our government, that, that is not just binary, right? It's not just, that shouldn't be just this or that, and we turn it into that, right? We've turned a, a, a three-headed uh, of, of our de departments of government, and we've turned it into a binary thought of just Republicans and Democrats. Mm. Right? And everything. The judicial, the Congress, the Senate, you know, all, all the House of Reps, yeah, all the stuff. Yeah, we like to make two sides out of everything. Everything. It I makes us some, feel better. I see some, like, comments. What's going on, Amy? Well, yeah. We're talking a lot, Amy. What's going on? Well, Chuck was saying it goes back to caring about people. Mm -hmm. And when you have a friend or family member who you disagree with, you're not trying to score. You're not trying to win with them. Yes. So that was a good comment. Yeah. Yes, Chuck, it's like when we're in community and we have that empathy for the person we're with, we are more apt to seek to understand versus to win. I think on Facebook, when it's faceless, we want to win. There's a high and adrenaline rush that goes with the winning. There's a thought. But Facebook is faceless. Yeah. I mean, there really well, is. It's just a, it's faces. a bit, well, but I mean, yeah, but, but think about that for a minute. You see, that's pictures. profound. We're not speaking to a person. We're, we're, we're digitally analog, you know, putting something out there as a thought or an idea without thinking of the ramifications or repercussions or anything like that, and it's so much easier to do that. As compared to if we were face-to-face -face with a person, we would never say those things face-to-face. -face. No, because if I still want to be your friend, right. I have to want to understand your side or else we part ways mad. Right. You know, and that's the part that on Facebook you're not really together in relationship or physically. And so mm -hmm. you don't care if you part ways, mad. <laughs> you don't know the person anyway. Yeah. Oh, it's painful sometimes. Was there anything else, Amy? Sorry, we just spun off there. We spun off a lot. How much time do we have? We have two minutes. Um, so. How do you bring this back to the original, which was... Keeping a healthy balance for the things that matter. Right. And I think what we're saying is somehow making time for connection with others is that's important. That's so important. That yeah. We're one of the pieces. One of the pieces should be community, and I, I don't mean physical community. Are you trying to make this fall over now? Nope. <laughs> but that made me nervous. I think one of our pieces should be some kind of community that we're engaging in a kind of community um, that reminds us of why we're here, why we exist, and that if we don't have that relationship with somebody, that we're gonna continue to struggle in community. And that when we don't have that connection with each other, when we lose that connection, it begins, um, our, our culture, our psyche, everything, it begins to break down. Mm -hmm. And the isolation begins to set in, right? And that's where we, then we find that 
I'm right and you're wrong mindset um, begins to overtake and to overpower and it just and then we begin to define ourselves by what by not by as Christians or not as kind and godly people we begin to find our, define ourselves in other terms I'm a Democrat, I'm a Republican, I'm an Independent, I'm a Libertarian, right? We want to fight, fly the flag Later. instead of saying we are all human beings inexplicably connected to each other and that thing that connects us, that how I describe that is, is God, right? And it's kindness, it's love, it's inclusivity, it's generosity, it's all those things. And so it's just, it's just difficult when we don't, when we, when we don't participate in that community. And so I hope everybody um, can find a way to continue to do that. I, I at least want to challenge you with that. I want to leave you with those words. I think we're at time already. But I want to leave you with the words of find a way to connect with each other, right? Part of this balancing act, um, part of this finding balance in our lives, I believe has to include that community and connection. And without it, I think you said from the very beginning, the isolation, and then in isolation, what happens? Oh. Self yeah. takes over, right? Ego. Your perspective gets so inward yeah. that that's all you think about. Yeah, so. then it's all about me yeah. and my stuff. So, um, Amy, anything else? We good to go? All right. Thank you all for joining us. Uh, I do ask that uh, I believe the things we talk about are relevant and important. I ask that you like this. I ask that you share this to start your own conversations with those in your community and those people around you, whether that be at your workplace or home at your own kitchen table. So have a blessed day. Peace. See ya.